So there are many critics of the effort to keep drugs out of sport. It's called the anti-doping movement. And there's a very strong anti-anti-doping movement. And they have a lot of arguments that they will put forward. Uh, they will say that the whole paraphernalia and apparatus of doping is just, it's intrusive, it's wasteful, and it's ineffective. They'll make that argument. Some have argued that the fact that people have very different natural talents ought to count uh, in favor of doping. That is, we should use drugs to level the playing field. So if uh, I'm not as muscular as you are, I should be allowed to take anabolic steroids to build up my strength. Well, it's a clever argument. Who will judge what counts as an appropriate leveling? So you need criteria for deciding how much is permitted in order to level that playing field. Inevitable competitive dynamic that drives doping in sport in the first place will not go away. And that dynamic became obvious to me when I started listening to athletes nearly 40 years ago and asked them, why does anyone use these drugs? And the answer generally was, because if I don't, I'll lose to someone who is using them. And it, even if I'm better than they are, if I'm more talented than they are and work harder than they are, that still might only account for a two, maybe a 2% difference in my performance and their performance, which in sports is a lot, 2%. Uh, but if a drug gives them a 5% advantage, it overwhelms all of my talents and all of my efforts. That's why athletes use drugs, and that will be no different if we begin to allow athletes to use drugs to supposedly level the playing field.